Okay, so this is for anatomy and physiology one. This is chapter two, and this is part two about um, macromolecules. We finished talking about some inorganic chemistry concepts, water, bonding, all that good stuff. Now we're going to talk about some organic chemistry. So the difference, organic molecules are molecules that contain carbon, the element carbon, and most are components of living systems. Um, biological macromolecules or biomolecules, which we'll talk about, are a subset of organic chemistry. Um, inorganic are all, of, all other things like water, for example, which is also important. The four groups of biomolecules, macromolecules, that we'll talk about, lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and proteins. Um, they all, all contain carbon, hydrogen, and ox and, and generally oxygen, usually oxygen. Okay, um, so carbohydrates always contain those um, lipids. Some of the other molecules, proteins and uh, nucleic acids, also might have nitrogen, phosphorus, or sulfur as well. Um, they all have some form of carbon skeleton, a carbon ring, or a carbon chain. That's common between them. Um, these things called hydrocarbons, carbon can bind or um, bond with hydrogen. This is called a hydrocarbon. And that bond literally only contains a carbon and a hydrogen. Those are nonpolar, always nonpolar. When you see, so you see a whole bunch of carbons attached to a whole bunch of hydrogens. It is nonpolar and it is hydrophobic. Methane gas, CH4, is an example. Um, carbon skeleton contains two or more atoms. It has specific characteristics. So we're talking carbon chain, carbon ring, with usually hydrogen. Okay, so that's the carbon skeleton, carbon and hydrogen. Anything added on to that is called a functional group, like a bond to an OH or bond to a COOH or bonded to an N with two other hydrogens. Um, carboxyl groups, that would be a C, COOH, acts like an acid. An amine group, N, H, 2, 3, <clears throat> acts like a base. Okay, so polymers is another way to say like a large molecule. It's made of many subunits called a monomer. So blocks. I like to think of monomers as blocks. You built, put these blocks together to build a large polymer. The, the building blocks are similar in chemical structure. Polymers are carbohydrates is a polymer, nucleic acids is a polymer, and protein is a polymer. The building blocks to build those, so the carbohydrates, their specific monomer is simple sugars. Nucleic acids is nucleotide monomers, and proteins contain many, many no, amino acid monomers. Okay, two types of chemical reactions that are going to be important to know the names of these chemical reactions and what you're producing in the chemical reaction, and these are the same for any kind of polymer. Look at the names here. One chemical reaction is called dehydration synthesis. It's also called condensation. And then a hydrolysis reaction. And we can also see the image of what that looks like. Dehydration synthesis. A synthesis, if you're going to synthesize something, you're going to make it. So we're making something here. Dehydration, think of water. So here is an example. You take one monomer here, one building block, plus another monomer here. It just so happens that these are sugars. You add them together. You plus them together. And to do that, they need to kick out one molecule of water to produce this dimer, which means two molecules hooked together. Okay? This molecule loses an OH. This molecule, oh, well, one of them should say H. They both say OH. That's a mistake. One should say H and one should say OH to produce one molecule of water. 
So the result of the chemical reaction is one dimer in one molecule of water, and it says that right there. Hydrolysis is the opposite reaction of dehydration synthesis. So here we're starting products. These are our reactants. We're starting with um, one dimer and one molecule of water. You add them together. Water lyses, hydrolyses, water breaks. If you lyse something, you break it. It breaks up this dimer into two monomers. So dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis are two chemical reactions that are opposites of each other. So what are the three bi biomolecules that are polymers? Carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. What monomers compose them? Nucleic acid, you have to use nucleotides. Um, proteins, you need to use amino acids. And carbohydrates, you need to use simple sugars called monosaccharides. Lipids are technically not a polymer. They're very diverse. They're water insoluble. They don't mix with water. <clears throat> what do we need lipids for? To store energy. They're parts, important parts of your cell membranes um, and hormones. Four primary classes, triglycerides, phospholipids, steroids, and eicosanoids. <clears throat> so the most common type of lipid that we find in your body is the triglyceride. They provide long-term energy storage that's stored in your adipose tissue. Right next to adipose, just write fat. Was lights. Okay, so it supports our structures. We need this fat to cushion us and to insulate us to keep us warm. And how do you make a glyceride or a triglyceride? You need one glycerol, okay, one glycerol, and um, fatty acids, three fatty acids formed from a glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. And to make a triglyceride, to put three fatty acids together with one glycerol, whoop, put them together. Notice how the one, middle one's kink in this case. Um, you need to do a dehydration synthesis reaction. So water plus those four things produce, is a dehydration synthesis reaction. I mean, it produces water, I should say. Fatty acids, so like the my these fingers over here in a triglyceride. They vary in length. Some of these fatty acids can be saturated. Um, <clears throat> they don't have double bonds. Unsaturated only has one double bond, one double bond. So it's um, a little bit kinked. It bends a little bit. And polyunsaturated has two or more double bonds. So that's, so the, what type of fatty acid it is depends on bonding. Adipose tissue, so the fat in our body is called adipose tissue. Um, lipogenesis, if you have excess nutrients, so I eat more <clears throat> carbohydrates, fats, than my body can store or use, excess is going to be stored in your adipose tissue. It's called lipogenesis. <clears throat> I apologize. Um, when we need fats to, for energy, let's say I used up all my stored um, sugar, your body will then break down stored fats. That's called lipolysis, lysis. Water comes in and breaks it up to release that energy stored there. And this just shows <clears throat> that the, here's a triglyceride, um, lipogenesis, forming that um, triglyceride and lipolysis is breaking it up into its individual parts. So it's just putting all that those concepts together. Practice saying these words out loud and pointing to them. Another type of lipid is a phospholipid. It's amphipathic. If you remember, it has a polar region and two nonpolar tails. Like that. Um, it's similar to a triglyceride, except it has only two fatty acid tails. And and there's a polar head, a polar phosphate. It says it right there. The, the phosphate head is hydrophilic. It likes water. And the tails are hydrophobic. Steroids, so it's hydrocarbons, CHs, CHs, and except they're arranged in rings. 
They can be four carbon rings, um, three six carbon atoms attached, some five carbons. There's a variety there. Cholesterol is an example of a very important steroid. When you think of steroids, you think, oh, that's bad. Well, not necessarily. Steroids you need for proper structure of your body. Um, cholesterol you need for your plasma membranes. Good cholesterol. Another example of steroids that are important are estrogen and testosterone. And then bile salts are a steroid. Lastly, the main, another lipid group, <clears throat> eicosanoids. Um, they're involved in the inflammatory response. So if you're ill, the inflammatory response kicks in nervous system communications. These fat, important fats are involved in that. And then some other special ones, vitamins, A, E, and K you need. And then glycolipids we are going to find outside of the cell membrane um, involved in the cell binding to different other things. So which class of lipids forms the cell membranes? That would be the phospholipid. You have this polar head and that's nonpolar tails. Um, so we talked briefly about this, but saturated fats in foods are animal fats that are solid at room temperature, like uh, red meat fat or butter. Vegetable fats are unsaturated, so they're liquid at room temperature. They're generally healthier, um, but you can hydrogenate them, like add, pump in hydrogens to them to make them saturated. And um, some companies do this with their foods because saturated things or things that have trans fat last longer on the shelves. Partial hydrogenation is, is essentially what I just said, adding hydrogen ions to that fat to make it last longer. So foods that are processed or foods at um, fast food restaurants are often high in trans fats. They last longer, they fill you up longer, but the, the risk here is a higher risk for heart attack and stroke. So that is lipids and the introduction to the um, macromolecules.